And joining me live from Abuja studio is the leader of the House of Representatives, Alassane Addo Dogua. Good to have you join us. Now, let's look at the fact that Nigeria has now returned, you, probably afternoon. returned to um, the De January to December budget cycle. And people say that this is commendable. But when you also look at this budget, um, we continue to maintain that pattern of where um, the recurrent expenditure is higher than the capital expenditure. How does that address the need of the country that is in a recession at this time? Oh, uh, thank you very much for having me on this platform at this very critical period. Uh, I think as usual, uh, you cannot forget the fact that we are running a developing democracy. A developing democracy in a developing economy, a developing nation like our own country, Nigeria. Uh, it is my hope that as we progress, when we continue to progress, certainly some of these things we will come to address them, uh, I think, uh, gradually. Uh, the fact that you still have uh, uh, a, budget, a budget framework where the, cut, where the current expenditure is much higher than the capital expenditure is not, uh, it's not, uh, it's not an unknown fact. It's a fact that is always very, very uh, 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 known with developing nations. But you can also agree with me that with the budget we have at hand, the one we have just passed yesterday, there is a very significant improvement in terms of the capital provisions of the budget when you compare with previous budgets that we have passed in the past. That shows that we will increasingly, be, we will increasingly continue to be very sensitive to the fact that we need more of capital intervention in our national development. Uh, this is, uh, 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 if you go by the budget itself, you can see a very clear shift uh, from the usual practice in the past. Yes, the recurrent is a bit higher, uh, uh, but if you now compare it with the past budgets we have passed previously, there is a very significant increase, which now shows a clear shift from the usual practice in the past. We will continue to, to do the, the best we can, and we will also continue to really be more sensitive, more, more, more sensitive and more responsive to the need of the people in terms of creating uh, 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 budgetary frameworks that will address right. our capital needs in the economy than it used to be in the past. Um, talking about what we used to be, do in the past, um, we have always had... Uh, uh, a budget that is largely dependent on oil and revenue, and, and the same now for these budgets. But one of the things that stand out is the fact that we are putting um, the GDP growth rate at 3%. And, and many people say, for we do not have control over oil price. Anything can happen. And that could be overtly optimistic and unrealistic for the country. Oh, uh, be, that, be that as it be that as it may, be that as it may, uh, you know, budget itself is like a, it's a proposal. It's a proposal. Budget is always like a proposal. This is what we hope to have in the future, in the course of the implementation of the document, the appropriation document. And the fact remains that whoever is coming up with a projection of this nature, fixed fiscal projection for a developing country like Nigeria, basically you have to be very uh, proactive. Not only being proactive, you have to be optimistic. You won't expect a fiscal paper like budget of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to now be uh, pessimistic in our own projection. We are being optimistic. We are projecting, believing the fact that all parameters, the basic parameters that are contained in the content and the context of the budget will definitely prove to be in the positive. And you would not expect us to now be conservative in our expectations. The GDP is put at 3% because we believe uh, the, the Nigerian economy is not operating in isolation. It's an economy that also operates in consonance or in relationships with other global economies. So as long as some of these global projections uh, are, are pre uh, direct through the same direction, then I believe we will be able to harmonize uh, the activities of our internal economic activities. And by God's grace, we shall be able to achieve what we have projected in the 2021 budget. Don't forget also, we have had a lot of challenges, economic challenges. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted very negatively on the global economy. Some of the internal economic factors within the country itself, within the domestic e economic operations, are also militating against so many other things. And whether you like it or not at the moment, still the same oil that you think is losing relevance, the same oil that you think cannot provide a dependable or reliable option for the country still remains our major mainstream, All our right. major mainstay of our national economic income or revenue. 
and we cannot really run away from that fact. All right, I so want to believe that our projection as a National Assembly is from the perspective of being very optimistic, is from the perspective of trying to partner with global economies because we cannot operate in isolation. All I right, believe uh, Honorable we will get there. Dobruwa, you, you just allow me um, to jump in quickly because um, the budget is just one of the issues in the country at the moment. But there is also another issue arising from the House of Representatives, which is the fact that the House um, is looking at measures, or measures are only on the way to call a lawmaker, uh, Honorable Kinsley Chinda to other over what the House called an alleged call for the impeachment of President Muhammad Buhari. Uh, many people will say that, look, he has a right to, to uh, these utterances. So talk to us more about the measures to, uh, to call him to other. You, you, you see, I think as a parliament, uh, the House as a parliament is a democratic parliament agreed any member on the floor, whether of the opposition or of the ruling party, is entitled to his own opinion and he's also entitled to say what he thinks he can say within the context of what is acceptable by the ambit of the rules that govern our operations. The moment a member or a member or a group of members trying to get out of the code of our operations, then definitely we have a duty to call that member to order. All we are saying is that anyone can play his own kind of opposition. Anybody can play his own kind of opposition without let or hindrance. But the fact remains that you have to do that within the context of the laws and the rules of regulations of our own operation as a parliament and as a legislature that has some set down rules for us to operate and operate by. So what Honorable Kingsley Chinda was doing or is still doing is amounting to a direct undermining and direct uh, 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 disregard to the authorities of the leadership of the National Assembly and it's a breach of our collective and individual privileges as members of the National Assembly or members of the House of Representatives. In the first place, what he claims to be saying has never existed, it has never happened. There was no point in time when members of the so-called opposition sat and contemplated any impeachment process against Mr. President. And there was no point in time when the House collectively as an institution sat discussed or contemplated any move to initiate impeachment process. That had never happened. And for him to be making such kind of comments, that amounts to a breach of our privileges. Right. And definitely, as leadership of the Ninth House of Representatives, we cannot sit down and look on someone trying right. to derail the course of the institution of the legislature, trying to create an unwholesome right. uh, 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 relationship between the executive and the legislative arm of government. Right. It would have I'm, been a I'm different afraid, case um, if what he said was true. I'm afraid we do have to leave it there. You've made um, your point. Thanks for talking to us, Leader of the House of Representatives, Alhassan Adudogwas.